Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to show you how to install one of our preferred barrel blanks pre-fit barrels. We're going to go from a stripped action to a barreled action to a PRS ready rifle in just a couple minutes. There you go. Two pack. Oh, same spot. Same spot. Right on it, dude. All right, guys, so let's talk about the basic tools that you're going to need to do this process. It's actually not going to take a whole lot, just a couple specialized tools and you should be on your way. Uh, one of the most important tools for our barrel nuts is actually our own barrel nut wrench. Now this has a half inch drive hole cut into the back of it. It also has the barrel nut torque recommendation laser engraved on the wrench itself. So you won't have to worry about losing that little piece of paper. So that's good to go. You'll get the barrel nut along with your barrel. If it is a barrel nut style rifle, some of our prefits are a shouldered barrel and you will not have a barrel nut, but that is for the high-end custom actions. Most of the factory actions like Howas, Tikas, Rugers, Remington, Savages, they're all going to have barrel nuts. The most important set of tools that you're going to need to get this done at minimum is a go gauge. And at best, you're going to need a go and no go gauge. The no-go gauge here is indicated by the red, the go gauge is indicated by the green. Another very important tool that you're going to need is a vise, whether it's just a regular garage vise that you have at home or if you're fortunate enough to have a barrel vise, that is ideal. We're going to use a regular at-home bench vise here. Just as demonstration, we have our own barrel vise here. I want to show you guys how you can get it done with regular at-home tools. And then finally, you're gonna to need to get out your torque wrench. That's where you're going to pair this up with our barrel nut wrench, hook those two together, and then you're going to get your final barrel nut torque set against the action to lock everything in place. While our barrel nuts do have flats on them, it is possible to use a crescent wrench or an adjustable end wrench. However, be extremely careful not to round off the corners and to protect the finish on there, it's best if you can get some drywall tape, wrap the nut in the drywall tape, then put your adjustable end wrench on there and tighten it as close to the nut as possible, clamping it inside of the mouth, and then tighten it up. Do not go overboard. You can strip out the threads and ruin your barrel and barrel nut after waiting your time to get your custom barrel made. Do not over torque it. It doesn't take a whole lot to hold these things in place. All right guys, for this demonstration, I'm going to be putting on one of our Howa 1500 pre-fit barrels. This one happens to be a six millimeter Creedmoor, one to eight twist, and it's got the hex fluting pattern on here with Cerakoted flutes. We use this in our six millimeter shootout series, so you may have seen this rifle before. It's just got a standard Howa 1500 action. It's got the standard Howa two-stage trigger installed on it from the factory. So good little action, solid rifles. Let's get these two paired up. We'll get it headspace correctly and torque to spec so that we can set it inside of our chassis. All right, before you begin the process, let's make sure that our barrel nut is installed onto the barrel. There's actually a relief cut cut into our barrel nuts so that this will cover any gap once you back the nut away from the barrel. You can see here how there was a gap right between the barrel nut and the barrel. There's a lip that will go over the barrel before it shoulders out and bottoms out on that nut. That way you can back it off a few turns to set your headspace without ever showing an ugly gap. So before you thread your barrel into your action, go ahead and bottom the nut against the barrel. Make sure that it's down there and is threaded on as far as possible. You don't need to torque it or anything like that. Now for demonstrational purposes, my vise is not bolted down. I highly suggest bolting it down because it's gonna be a bit of a headache for me, but we'll get it done. I am going to clamp the action in the vise. Now the shape of this Howa action is round on the sides, but with a scope base installed, creates a nice flat section on top, as well as a nice flat section on the bottom. So I'm actually going to clamp it in there sideways against the scope base and the bottom of the action. The recoil lug and the trigger just clear the jaws of this vise, so it's quite a good fit. However, I'm not going to really clamp down hard on it, just snug enough to hold it in there and then it's snug enough to hold it with the offset weight of the barrel out front. So we'll get it tightened up there. Nothing too much, don't wanna hurt the scope base or mar any of the surfaces on your action. Be careful when clamping your action or your barrel. Like you can see here, I've used a small rag just to try and mitigate anything happening to my action or barrel. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and thread in our barrel. 
All right guys, so I've made my first mistake here. I actually need to loosen my vise and flip it over. That way I can get my go and no go gauges in and out of the action. So learn from my mistake here. All right, so let's go ahead and take our go gauge, again, marked with green. I do have a no-go gauge marked with red. Let's drop the go gauge in here and see if we can get our bolt to close. I'm going to guess no because the barrel is bottomed out, so it's probably going to be a ways out. No, the bolt will not close because the go gauge is too long for the amount of space there is cut in the chamber. So what we're going to do is we're going to back the barrel out. So let's grab our barrel, loosen it up, maybe a half turn. Okay. Now it's in, let's thread the barrel back up to where it just touches that go gauge. So right as it snugs up, you're going to want to snug it up against your go gauge and then ever so slightly, like a 30 second of a turn, go ahead and back it off of your go gauge so that it has a little bit of space. And this is the part where we're going to torque our barrel nut against the action. So we're going to take our preferred barrels barrel nut wrench. This one's cut to 1.150 on the inside here. We'll put this guy on there. And you need to be very careful not to let your barrel twist as you rotate the barrel nut. That's going to be the trick of this. So we're going to go ahead and snug this guy up. Looks like the barrel did not move. Now we can take our go gauge out. Be careful not to drop these. If you dent them, they can uh, be ruined from being dropped on a hard surface. So now let's try our no-go gauge. Okay, at this point, the no-go gauge does not go, and the go gauge does. It's exactly where you want to be. Headspace should be set correctly at this point. All right. There we go. Now, we're going to take our torque wrench, we're going to put our barrel nut wrench on the torque wrench like this. I'm setting it 90 degrees to the length of the torque wrench, so I'm not going to stick it straight out the end of the torque wrench because it will increase the length of the torque wrench and change the torque reading. So I'm actually going to rotate it 90 and it'll give you the same calibrated torque reading that it normally would. So let's go ahead and Slip it onto our barrel nut here. There we go. And I'm just going to push down. Alright. Got that one down to 25 foot pounds. Now, let's check our headspace again. Let's try the go gauge. Good. And let's check our no-go gauge. If we did this correctly, it should not close. So as you can see, it starts to cam, but it won't let it chamber. This amount of drop where it's coming down, it's starting to close the bolt, that's fine. As long as it's not like a friction fit, if you can actually get it closed, that's bad. Don't beat on it with a hammer to see if you can get it to close, because that's not good. But at this point, under regular pressure of running your bolt, I cannot get that no-go gauge to go. So, our headspace has been set correctly. Let's go ahead and throw this action and barrel into our chassis. So as part of the 6mm shootout videos that we did, we built three different chassis rifles. And on the Hawa, we picked up an XLR element chassis. So I'm going to show you guys just how to throw this right into that element chassis. Let's go ahead and close our action. At this point, we'll just tip the chassis up, make sure our trigger aligns with the trigger hole, our bolt goes into the bolt relief, and then we get our recoil leg set down into the chassis. There we go, no play, action's not going anywhere. Drop our hardware in here, so let's just snug that one before we get our rear snugged in there. Now it is ideal to get your action screws torqued to spec. I will do that at a later point. I just don't have my torque wrench in here with me because it's inch pounds, not foot pounds like this guy. So there we go. Got our barreled action into the chassis. Let's drop our Vortex Optic on top and it's ready to go. 
All right guys, so on these Vortex rings, we've got the PMR precision match rings. It's just a couple of Torx heads right in there. So I loosen mine up so that there's a good amount of slop and play in them so I can slip them right on. There should be one key in front and one key in rear of our scope base. Because this scope was mounted previously, I'm just putting it back together. And then again, I will torque these to spec once I get my inch pound wrench out at a later point. And these will be good to go. But for now, I'll just get them in and snugged up. This is a Night Force 20 MOA base for the Hella 1500. Vortex Precision Match Rings, Vortex PST Gen 2 Scope, 5 to 25. And there it is, guys. As promised, we've got our Hella 1500 in 6mm Creedmoor with our pre-fit barrel. We've got it headspace correctly, torque to spec, dropped in our chassis, optic mounted. We have a PRS ready rifle, ready to go with our pre-fit barrel. I greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I really hope it helped you out. If you have any questions at all, drop them in our comment section below, or feel free to go on our website and send us an email with any questions you might have about installing your pre-fit barrel. I tried to use the bare minimum tools necessary. I mean, I have three tools out here. I've got an Allen for my scope, I've got an Allen for the chassis, and I've got a torque wrench. I've got headspace gauges and a barrel nut wrench. So pretty standard stuff, nothing wild needed. Just a barrel vise and a rag, and you can have your own pre-fit barrel change out to a newer, better competitive caliber for your rifle, or just bring life to an old favorite. Again, thanks for watching, guys. I greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe while you're here, and we will see you guys in the next one.